When it comes to design, when it comes to de it will still utilize the flight foam, the flight foam. Not missing out this time. We are definitely getting a pair of the new versions, the V12. Oh, was a shoe that I sort of ummed and ahmed, uh, blur, blur. <laughs> Bleh, bleh, Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. It is great to have you back on the channel. Yes, unfortunately in the UK we have gone back into lockdown. So I hope all you guys out there in the UK are coping with it okay and it's not hitting you too hard. It's definitely a crazy up and down world that we are living in at the moment. And this is why exercise and our health is more important than ever. Running can play a massive part in a healthy lifestyle, keeping us fit, strong and healthy, but also building a strong immune system, which is great at fighting off viruses. But also running plays a big part in our mental health, which is so important in these stressful times. So make sure you're getting outside, guys. You're getting outside in the fresh air. You're keeping that exercise going. You're staying motivated motivated through lockdown just to keep you fit and healthy and strong in these troubled times. So after a stellar year in 2020 when it comes to running shoes and running shoe development and tech, I was a little bit worried about 2021 and it not living up to last year and it being a bit of a disappointment. But I can definitely say that's not the case. I've been seeing a lot of new running shoes and running tech in store lately and I can definitely say there is some exciting times ahead. There's some amazing shoes just on the horizon and we're going to be testing and reviewing most of them for you guys at home. So in this video we're going to run through the shoes that we're super excited about and the shoes we're really looking forward to getting our feet in and testing and reviewing at Run For Adventure but we also thought we'd run you through the shoes that we feel are going to be the standout running shoes in 2021 and we're going to start with the road shoes first. So first up is a brand that if you follow the channel you know they really impressed us last year and in fact they impressed a lot of reviewers and runners lots of positive feedback about their their shoes. They had a couple of years of producing some really disappointing shoes so it was great to see them come back with a bang. Great road shoes, great trail shoes. We saw some incredible tech and developments. All the shoes looked really cool in design and they chose some really brilliant colorways. It looks like they're going to duplicate that in 2021. I've already seen some amazing updates on current models but also some really interesting new models within their shoe range and the brand is Saucony. So the first shoe from Saucony that we'll definitely be testing and reviewing at the channel is their lightweight training shoe, the Kinvara 12. The shoe has gone through a complete remodel compared to the Kinvara 11. So new upper, new midsole construction, the design looks really wicked and the colour combinations are amazing again. I can actually vouch for all the colourways within the Saucony range for 2021. It's very rare that when the reps come in store and we have to pick out the models and colourways that I find it so hard to choose because you like all the colorways. So again, we're predicting strong things for the brand this year. The new Kinvara still runs off a full power run midsole with a four mil offset, but it has been a bit more stripped back in this version compared to the Kinvara 11. So the shoe now weighs in at only 213 grams in a men's shoe compared to the 233 grams of the previous version. It should be a bit more in keeping in feel and design of some of the older, more previous versions of the Kinvara. So if you're a big fan of them earlier shoes, you should really really like these updates. I actually really like that Saucony had added a, a bit of cushioning and padding to the Kinvara 11. Yes, it went up in weight, but I think it made the shoe a, a little bit more comfortable on the longer runs and maybe a better all-round training shoe. I know I heard some feedback from some die-hard Kinvara wearers that said they found uh, the weight increase and the extra padding a bit disappointed. So that's probably why Saucony have stripped the shoe back again in the Kinvara 12. Always a good thing when a new model comes out from a brand and it hasn't gone up in price. So the shoe is going to retail in the UK at £120 and it should be available really soon on the 1st of Feb this year. Next up from Saucony is a shoe we are super excited to get hold of and get out running in at Run For Adventure. One, because it is a brand new shoe within the Saucony range and it looks like a really fast, responsive sort of training, tempo, speed work shoe. And two, because it's only going to retail in the UK at £100. 
pounds, so great value. The Saucony Axon is a shoe designed to be a daily trainer that will easily cross over to speed work or tempo runs. It's taken a lot of its styling and design features from the Endorphin range, and it carries a very similar profile through its midsole. It runs off a four mil offset, and it actually looks very similar to the Endorphin Shift, and it incorporates a lot of the similar features, but weighing in at 264 grams in a men's shoe compared to the 286 grams of the Shift, and it costs 30 pounds less, I think it is a must try shoe for 2021, and hopefully it will be available to buy in the UK on the 1st of April. Last but not least from Saucony when it comes to their road shoes of 2021, it is the very, very exciting new Endorphin Speed 2. The original version of the shoe was one of my standout shoes of 2020, and if I'm honest, most runners standout shoe of the year. Having seen the new shoe in store, I can say Saucony have done a fantastic job on the new Endorphin Speed 2. Obviously, being one of their standout shoes for 2020, it's just had a subtle update. So it still carries that brilliant full Power Run PB midsole, still runs on an eight mil offset. It's gonna weigh in at 221 grams in a men's shoe, and it still incorporates that brilliant, fast speed roll technology from Saucony. The biggest changes in the shoe is when it comes to the upper, and Saucony have worked really hard with their athletes to fine tune that upper construction, uh, completely re designed heel counter to offer a better fit in the back end of the shoe but they've also increased the structure in the upper to give you a bit more specific lockdown and midfoot hold when it comes to the design and the colorways of the new speed 2 you are going to love them some of the best colorway combinations i've ever seen within a running shoe i'd love to show you some pictures obviously but i would get in trouble if i did so so we're not going to do that the shoe's not available in the uk until about mid-june so there is a bit of wait for this one guys but it it will definitely be worth the wait and it's going to retail in the UK at £155. Moving on to the next brand and a shoe I'm really excited to get in and test is New Balance's 1080 V11. After hearing lots of great things about the V10 version of the shoe from viewers of the channel but also customers in store and it was actually one of the most popular neutral road shoes of 2020. Again similar to the Endorphin Speed 2 there's no great changes to this shoe. It's still going to carry that really soft plush deeply cushioned fresh foam x midsole similar to the previous version weight wise it's going to weigh in at 285 grams in a men's shoe and 227 grams in a ladies so a really great weight for that deeply cushioned daily training shoe all the reports coming back from america are the shoe is feeling fantastic and all the improvements have definitely worked when it comes to the 1080 v10 it was a shoe that i ummed and ahed about reviewing last year i didn't uh, i really wish i had done because all the great feedback the shoe got so we're not missing out this time guys we're definitely getting a pair of the new v11s we're going to give them a really good testing and in-depth review on the channel for you guys at home the shoe should be available sort of march april time in the uk and it's going to retail at 125 pounds next up for standout shoes of 2021 is actually a brand that we've never reviewed at run for adventure and if i'm honest i haven't reviewed them because i've never really got on very well with their shoes i've always found them a bit dated in technology a bit stiff through the midfoot a bit high in the heel and just a bit clunky to run in and not that comfortable but they actually made lots of new and exciting developments in 2020 so really looking forward to getting into some of their new shoes this year and it is asics their shoes have definitely got lighter and softer and more responsive and they're starting to catch up all the other manufacturers that kind of left them behind and their first shoe that really excites us for 2021 is their lightweight training shoe, the Noosa Tri 13. This is a model of ASIC shoe that I am super familiar with coming from a triathlon background. This model of shoe is really popular within that sport, but the shoe has gone through one of its biggest transformations in 2021 when you compare the Noosa Tri 12 to the 13. The shoe now carries a much deeper, softer midsole and it's worked off that Evo Ride ASICS platform, offering a wider platform for a more stable feel underfoot and a much plusher, deeper level of cushioning. You've also got that slight rocker shape worked into that midsole to help with running economy. The compound in the midsole of the shoe is gonna be ASICS Flight Foam, so offering a very soft and plush ride compared to the previous version, but also giving the runner a little bit more energy return as you work your way through to toe off. It's gonna to run off a five mil heel offset and it's gonna weigh in at 224 grams in a men's shoe and an even lighter 190 grams in a ladies. This shoe by ASICS is really pitched at the triathlon market, but it really could be used by anyone looking for that fast daily 
training shoe or a race day shoe with a little bit more substance. Now, if you like colorful running shoes, you are gonna love the designs and the colorways chosen for this shoe. It has to be one of the boldest, loudest and brightest running shoes I've ever seen and I absolutely love it. Really excited to get my feet in a pair and take them for a spin. And we're actually gonna be stocking the shoe at PB Running Hale and Roach. It's due for release uh, February and March time and it's gonna retail at around 120 pounds. Also from ASICS is another update of a popular shoe of 2020, the ASICS Nova Blast. We should see the Nova Blast 2 hitting the shelves in the UK around summertime this year. It's a shoe that I'm really excited about testing and reviewing. Again, another one of them standout soft cushion training shoes of 2020 where I heard lots of great feedback. The midsole of the new Nova Blast 2 is pretty much the same as the previous version of the shoe, but there is going to be some updates to the upper construction. There's not a massive amount of information around at the moment about this shoe, but we do know it's going to utilize the same ASICS Flight Foam Blast compound in the midsole, and it's going to run off a 10 mil offset, so very similar to the previous version. Weight-wise, it's going to weigh in at 270 grams in a men's shoe, and it's going to retail in the UK at 130 pounds. Right, moving on to what surely will be one of the biggest sellers and most hyped running shoes of 2021, and it is Nike's Vaporfly Next Percent 2. The new Vaporfly Next Percent 2 will still run off a very similar Zoomex compound and carbon plated midsole, but there has been some quite big updates to the upper of this very popular marathon shoe. The shoe is gonna be constructed using a softer engineered mesh upper to offer the runner a bit more breathability. You're gonna get a bit of reinforcement in the toe box. There's gonna be a rubber overlay on the outside of the upper to improve durability. And last but not least, there is gonna be a slight update to the tongue in the shoe where Nike have added some zonal padding to relieve any pressure caused by the laces. So all them updates should improve comfort and breathability in the shoe. And I'm sure there's lots of runners out there taking a big sigh of relief because they're hearing that the Vaporfly is having an update and not being discontinued. Having not run in the first version of the Vaporfly and being really disappointed with the Alphafly Next Percent, I'll definitely be getting my hands on a pair of these new shoes. That is, if I can get my hands on a pair because I'm sure Nike will make it super limited just to build all the hype. The shoe should be available in the UK around mid-summer time this year and I've even heard rumors that it might be a little bit cheaper than the previous version, but I'll believe that when I see it. Also getting an update in 2021 is Nike's Pegasus 37 to the Pegasus 38. Now the 37 was really a shoe that surprised me in 2020. Having never run in any of the previous versions of the shoe, I really did enjoy my time in the Pegasus 37. However, not the case for a lot of runners. I've heard lots of negative feedback when it comes to the Pegasus 37 about fit issues, not fitting in the heel right, having lots of slippage, and runners really struggling to get it locked in and dialed in around their midfoot. So it's not surprising to hear that most of the changes happening with the Pegasus 38 are coming down to the upper and the fit of the shoe. It looks like Nike have changed the design of the heel counter, and they've also added some internal power adding to improve fit and to aid with slippage. The tongue in the shoe has got slightly longer and they've added some very much needed padding to that tongue. There's a slight change in the fabrics used in the upper construction, but the midsole and the outsole look to stay pretty much the same. The shoe is gonna be available mid-summer in the UK and it's gonna retail at the same price as the previous version at 105 pounds. The last shoe on our list comes from Hoka One One and it is their new Carbon X2. We've actually just managed to get hold of a pair at the channel there's one just sitting here above my shoulder and in my hand this first version of this shoe was a super hyped running shoe with Jim Wormsley trying to break the 100k world record just before launch all that hype obviously worked because it was one of the biggest selling carbon plated running shoes of 2020. To be honest, I tried a pair of the original shoes on and I wasn't that impressed, so I didn't bother getting a pair to run in. And I'm kind of glad I didn't because the new version of the Carbon X feels and looks so much better. The shoe has undergone a big remodel, so it now runs off a lighter, softer midsole for increased comfort and performance. Hoka have really focused on the upper of the new Carbon X 2 as well for optimizing the fit of the shoe. It has this added heel collar, a new notched tongue in the upper, and it's also constructed using this new engineered mesh with embroidered TPU yarns and increased reinforcement around the laces. The shoe still utilizes Hoka's aggressive meta rocker shape to the midsole and it still incorporates Hoka's 
responsive carbon plate. It's been designed for those super fast training days or as a race day shoe. Weight wise, the men's shoe comes in at 239 grams and the ladies 198 grams. It still has a five mil offset. So we've got 32 mil under the heel and 27 mil under your forefoot. The shoe retails for 160 pounds. So pretty reasonable for a carbon plated shoe and has just become available in the UK. We actually stock this shoe at PB Running Hail and in our Roach store. So if you're in Cornwall and you're interested in a pair, it's definitely worth giving us a shout. We've managed to get a couple of runs in the new Carbon X2 and it's feeling really good underfoot. We will be back on the channel with a full in-depth review on this carbon plated shoe very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. So that is a few of the shoes we feel are gonna really stand out in 2021. We've just picked out a small selection, but it looks like it's gonna be a great year again when it comes down to running shoe tech and development. We are also gonna be focusing this year on brands that we haven't reviewed on the channel before, but also on them shoe brands that are starting to get back into the running market. You know, brands like Reebok, Puma, and Deodora. I really hope you enjoyed the video guys and maybe it highlighted some shoe models that you haven't come across before. If you did, hit that like button and give us a big thumbs up. It's really appreciated at the channel. Obviously this video was the pick of our standout road running shoes for 2021, but all the brands are also making updates and bringing out new models when it comes to their trail running shoes. And some of my favorite trail running shoes are getting an update. Really excited to talk you through those guys and we'll be bringing you that video very soon. I'd love to hear all about the shoes you are looking forward to and you are super excited about in 2021. So let us know in the comments below. Don't forget you can follow us on our other social media platforms, whether it be Instagram, Facebook or Strava. You can also check out Run For Adventure's super cool merchandise at runforadventure.uk. But for now guys, thanks for watching. Stay positive, keep out there, keep fit, keep healthy and as always, Stay safe and keep on running.